Welcome to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm John White. With me today is Mr. Joe Kane, and Joe is the owner of Greenhouse Nursery. Welcome to Southwest Yard and Garden. Well, thank you, John. Today we're talking about ponds, and being that we're in uh, coming into fall and and uh, winter's not too far off, what kind of things do people need to do uh, to get a pond ready for winter? We get a pond ready for winter. We we worry about. Um, you know, having the pumps running all the time, just because the fish need the oxygen in the water, what plants you do have will still need it. It also keeps the uh, bacteria in the water and in the filters alive and active. Um, freezing isn't really an issue, but it, should we have such one, a freeze, then the, the running water is gonna stop that from happening. So I can put the ice skates up? Yes, you're gonna have to. Yes. Okay, keep the water running. Okay. Uh, water run, and that, and that goes for year-round, 24 hours a day. Okay. You're going to have um, bacteria can start being damaged after as much as having a, a pump off for an hour. And this bacteria is what's keeping the, uh, the algae in check. You'll always have algae, but the bacteria will keep it in check. Okay. Now, a person that has a smaller pond but still outdoors, they still need to keep the water flowing, keep it moving, otherwise it will possibly get some ice formation on it. You definitely will, and, and a lot of times on small ponds, though, folks won't have fish, and then, of course, it's not that big of an issue. Uh, but when you do have fish in there, then water has to run all the time. Okay. Now, we had looked at some components on a pond system in an earlier segment. Um, are there things that we need to do with, you know, pumps and filters and, and that kind of thing? Well, sure. We have... Um, this is an aquascape design here, and we got uh, a waterfall, which we call a biofall, and inside of there is a, a layer of lava rock that's more of a biofilter for the bacteria. And they just breed in there. Underneath that is a series of filters, somewhat like uh, air conditioned filters. The water is actually pulled from this side, that's where our pump is, and it also goes through a series of filters as well as a catch net to catch the big things. Now, what you'll find is um, that that net needs to be cleaned out every couple of days. Okay. Because um, you'll get the big debris from trees, especially if you have a tree over your pond. Windy Leaves days are going to bring it. And even the, the pond plants, as they grow out, they'll start to get caught in there. Okay. And we also get the occasional fish in there, so we'll just scoop them back into the, into the pond and, and go on. And then, of course, underneath that is, is a series of filters that you just hose down and uh, put back. Um, that is then pulled to the bottom of this biofall and, and the whole thing starts over again. Okay. So uh, if you have one of these systems, um, you do need to clean on both ends or just on the well, pump end? Well, th this is end. where you want to catch most, most of your dirt. Now you can see we have flagstone over this one. There, there's not as much we do to that, but once a year we'll take it all apart and clean it out. Okay. Um, How about as far as any chemical treatments to the water? Is there anything that's used there to keep algae and bacteria down that yeah, doesn't the, uh, hurt fish and the, you know, plant the pea material. algae and the string algae they're they're controlled we will just use bacteria for it and that comes in a in a container and you put in it depends on the size of your pond how much you're going to put in um, and it also depends on the time of year as it gets colder you'll find that you need to add more of the bacteria because it doesn't withstand the winter as well so it takes almost I found it takes almost twice as much during the winter time. And uh, it's still difficult to keep all the algae in check. How about as far as uh, pH of the water? Is that an important thing or not? And now, does it change? Although there are pond tests for it, we found that with a, the, a balance of plants and fish, which looking at this pond, this is too many plants, but our water hyacinth just had a good season. And uh, we'll, we'll need to thin this out. But a balance of plants and fish and just providing a whole ecosystem usually takes about a year to figure out. And when you figure it out, the algae will be in check, and that's how we deal with it. Okay. Now, as far as wintering plant material over, uh, the hyacinth, what's going to happen to the hyacinth with a cold winter? Well, with the first freeze, and, and actually they'll start going down as it just gets colder at nights. But um, it's very rarely that you'll get water hyacinth to, to winter over. They, they won't handle the freeze and you could try to bring them in, but typically they're a relatively cheap plant, so we just restock them every season. Okay, treat we, them as an annual. Treat them, call that the water annual. Okay, and then our lilies? The lilies over on this side, they're very hardy. Of course, you won't see anything during the winter time, 
Um, they'll basically just uh, wither away and get caught in your filter, so you'll, another thing you'll have to catch in your filters. But uh, the important thing is that people are fooled into thinking that the, the plant is actually dead, that it's gone. And, but come next spring, early summer, they will begin to, to come back out. It's an amazing process. Okay. Joe, thank you very much for the tips on pond management here during the winter, and thank you for being on Southwest Yard and Garden. Thanks for having me, John.